Hello, this is Archie Dunlop with Talking Astrology with Archie on Wednesday, July the 5th, 2023. Today I want to talk a bit about the riots in France and specifically I want to look at the horoscope of Emmanuel Macron, the French president. Now, if you're in the United States, you might be thinking, well, who cares about France? I mean, why should you be interested in what's going on in France? Uh, I suspect this video is not going to get a lot of views simply because they're going to people are going to look at it and say Emmanuel Macron, Marine Le Pen, you know, yeah, who cares? Well, if you are American, you should realize that if it wasn't for the French, you would never have got your independence. Uh, during the Revolutionary Wars, it was French support, uh, I think specifically uh, French naval support, that allowed the colonists to beat the British. Without the French, um, yeah, you would have lost if you're American, yeah. And uh, yeah, you've probably been rather like Canada. Um, so yeah, you should, if you're American, you should be grateful to the French because it costs the French a huge amount. I mean, it costs them so much money, according to some arguments, that uh, it led to the French Revolution um, over 10 years later. So I'm not going to apologize for um, focusing on France today. Okay, so before I talk about uh, France and Emmanuel Macron, I'm going to look at um, today's astrology. So this is a chart for today, which is Wednesday, July the 5th, uh, 2023, set for noon, set for New York. And um, today's astrology, you know what? It's another day when it's actually not very interesting. Um, you can see the moon is in Aquarius. Um, the moon is sort of making a square to Jupiter. Um, but if you're in, if you're in America, this, this square is not, not really going to have much of an, much of an impact on you. Um, if you're in, if you're in, um, Europe, Asia, yeah, it's going to be more, more, more significant. This moon square Jupiter. Um, so, what does it mean to have a moon in Aquarius? Well, I think it, we're going to be quite independent-minded. Um, we're going to want to do things our way, um, and we are we're not going to take kindly to uh, people telling us what to do. Um, but, you know, it's OK to be independent minded. Um, interestingly, um, during the Declaration of Independence, when when Declaration of Independence was declared, the moon was in the moon was in Aquarius. Um, so the moon was in Aquarius and the sun was in Cancer, like to, like now. So it's, it's, you know, it's a very American kind of day, even though it's July the 5th, the day after Independence Day. Um, you know, like uh, like many Americans, we're going to be independent minded and in our own way, particularly when it comes to our, our property and our little patch of dirt. We're going to not going to want people to interfere um, in the way we're um, running our lives. You know, and I'm not just talking to Americans, I'm talking about everyone. We're going to not want interference, whoever we are. Um, that's that is um, going to be important. Uh, anything else? Well, I mean, that is pretty much it. I should say that Mars, the planet Mars is making a stressful aspect to, um, to the hypothetical planet Hades. So when you've got Mars Hades, um, there's plenty of scope for, for violence there. Um, there's plenty of scope for just putting energy into things which are kind of dubious, even criminal. So we must not be, we must not be tempted. Um, 
I suppose on a positive sense, some of us might feel we need to use our energy to, you know, perhaps do charity work, um, work, for example, clearing up garbage, putting energy into clearing up garbage. Um, yeah, that would be a good thing to do with Mars, Mars aspecting um, Hades. But really, that is that is about it. There's, it's not, it's not really. Um, a very exciting day. Now, as far as um, one, sorry, one thing I should say is that today is actually the solar return for the United States. It's when um, it's when the sun returns to where it was on July the fourth, seventeen seventy six, and you'd think it would be happen on July the fourth, but actually. Um, it happens on July the 5th. So it might be a good idea to just have a look at this solar return. Um, so let's uh, just have a quick look at it because I didn't talk about it yesterday. Um, so here is the solar return. That's the USA chart. And let's, um, let's look at the return chart. And there we go. There's the return chart. So this is it. The return actually happens today, July the fifth, twenty twenty-three. Um, this is set for Philadelphia. Now, as far as the the solar return chart for the USA, remember it's about the USA. It's not about you as a person. You know, even if you are an American citizen. So, in terms of the collective of the of the United States. I mean, I've already looked at this chart. You can see that Saturn is on the seventh house cusp. Um, and as I said, when I would already looked at this chart before, um, the seventh house cusp represents um, one's enemies. It also represents what we project onto. So if we've got issues and problems, we might not want to own them. So we're going to project them onto other people or perhaps on other countries. And as I've said before, when looking at this chart, you know, this is a time when I think that the United States foreign policy is going to, um, is going to probably move from bad to worse. I, I don't think America is any fit in any fit state to run um, a coherent foreign policy. Why? Well, if you think about it, you know, it's not like the old days, the good old days, 19, you know, 1970s, when you have people like Henry Kissinger, who really knew what they were doing, even if they were really, uh, you know, real realist into their real politique. You know, Kissinger was very good at that. Um, but, uh, you know, things have changed. And, um the people running running um, America's foreign policy are just not in that kind of league. And I suppose it's their mistakes um, that are going to mess it up for the United States. And there's there's Saturn. And I think that's I think that's the main theme um, over the next year. But, you know, maybe you think the foreign policy isn't going to isn't going to affect you as a person, even if you are an American citizen or American resident. But anyway, I was just pointing that out. So as far as what I want to say about um, your no, so sorry, what I want to do now is I want to look at your star sign, uh, even though um, not much is going on today. I have done um, forecasts for the 12 signs. So here we go. This is for today, Wednesday, July the 5th, 2023. Aries. Friends are looking for freedom without understanding what freedom means. And you yourself are attracted to things that are somewhat sleazy. But don't get in so deep that you can't get out. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because Mars, ruler of Aries, is making a, um, a hard aspect to Hades. Taurus, at work, you can be original, but your stubborn approach may cause problems depending on the situation. So don't rock the boat unless it's really necessary. Gemini, travel plans should be reconsidered. 
the details just don't work out and consider the possibility that optimistic feelings about society's future don't have a basis in reality. Cancer. You know that things are complicated and you therefore shouldn't expect immediate answers. Too much emotion could lead you down a blind alley. Leo. You believe you are right about most things, but there are times when you need to listen carefully to what other people are saying. Every reasonable suggestion needs to be considered. Virgo, you know that certain aspects of your life are a bit of a mess and now is the time to create some order. Only then can further plans be put into action. Libra, it's a day when you can collect what is owed to you, not just by people and organisations, but by the subtle forces swirling all around you. A good day for the good, a bad day for the bad. Scorpio, at work you may have to deal with things that you'd rather not touch. Make, make your feelings clear and try to understand the rational basis of your concerns. Sagittarius, there are things you want to say, but is it worth the effort? Right now, few people are in the mood for listening and it's easy to create the wrong impression. Capricorn, it seems a good idea to ground yourself with particular emphasis on money. However, you might not get much cooperation. This means that self-reliance is the way forward. Aquarius, you're able to project yourself very well, provided that you're properly grounded, which means staying in one place as much as possible and not scattering your resources. And Pisces, you are picking up lots of impressions and in this way you are slowly building up a picture of the world and its problems. Concrete actions should probably be postponed. So I'm now going to move to um, the I Ching. Sorry, the I Ching. Got to get the pronunciation right. I'm now going to move to the I Ching and um, as usual, I, um, I threw three coins and I asked the question, what is Wednesday going to be like for visitors um, to my channel? So the first um, hexagram I threw was hexagram number 57, the gentle. Um, this is like the concept of a wind. Uh, a wind that is, yeah, it's quite gentle, it's not very obvious, but it's swirling all around and it's trying to get to the roots of a problem. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. We know something is wrong and um, we want to know what it is that is wrong. Um, and, uh, you know, the the I Ching talks about two approaches to dealing with things that are wrong. Um, if you want to find out where the wrong is uh, or where the evil is, you need a priest. If you want to get rid of that evil, you need a magician. So this is really what we're, what we're trying to focus on. Um, and in the first instance, it's about um, tracking down the evil in our life to its very source um, and that seems to be yeah, that seems to be a reasonable thing to do although of course it's a bit dramatic um, sounds like the exorcist doesn't it uh, but it's not I mean I don't want to scare you um, um, you know I'm not talking about demons or anything by the way you know this is again it's just a one day reading don't worry about it too much um, but it does seem that you know we try to do this we maybe almost succeed in working out what's wrong but when we, if we really, really get down to it, in the end, we perhaps start to realize that what, whatever is wrong, whether it's in ourselves, 
in our immediate environment, in our society, whatever. It's just too much to deal with. There's something which is actually very wrong. Um, so what do we do about it? Well, the hexagram does move. Uh, it moves to um, it moves to hexagram number thirty one, which is influence. So we perhaps need a longer term approach. Um, we need to slowly get together people who can help us deal with the issue and use our influence, you know, perhaps explain what the, what the issue is. And um, then I think we're going to get the help we need. And um, this means that we're going to be able to root out whatever that problem is um, without being too afraid of rooting it out. You know, it may be that there are people in our lives that are just not doing any good, doing, doing us any good. You know, we need to distance ourselves from them. And it's, and it's just hard. Um, maybe in such a situation, we need to we need to get help, but the I Ching is certainly saying that that help is available. So let's now move to the subject of um, France. Um, now, if you don't know, um, this all started when a seventeen-year-old teenager. Um, was killed by the police. His name was Nahel Mezuk. And on June 27th, um, 2023, so that would be about a week ago, um, the uh, there was a car chase um, around the city of Nanterre. I think Nanterre is a suburb of Paris, but I, th I believe. Um, and he... Yeah, there was a there was a chase, and in the end, a policeman shot him, um, and as a result, um, there were riots everywhere. And I think you know there was um, there there was a racial element because he was I think he was of, of North African North African ethnicity, um, and. Uh, yeah, these riots spread all over all over France, and um, this is the, you know this is this is the way with riots. Um, I believe these riots are calming down a bit, and um, you know riots are quite you know relatively common in France. It's not exactly an unusual event, you know from a you know from a British perspective, you know. You know, Britain and France, you know, they're always great rivalries there. And, and um, you know, the British probably feel a certain sense of quiet satisfaction when they see riots in France. But then Britain can have its own riots. So, you know, it's, um, you know, we may, we, I, somehow we have a sort of um, schaden, schadenfreude to us where we sort of revel in other people's riots. Um, but, you know, I'm not reveling in this riot. Um so um yeah this was a chart so what was uh, what was going on when this riot happened um so, oh sorry when this when when mahel mezuk um was 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 shot um is there anything dramatic there we can see that um we can see that mars you see mars is at 22 1 um Leo and Uranus is at 21.32 Taurus. So there was a Mars Uranus square. It, had, it was actually had been exact um, the day before, um, or even the day before that. So it wasn't absolutely exact. But so when you see a Mars Uranus square, you're thinking, oh, well, that's going to be about violence, gunshots, and whatever. But it's going to happen. This kind of stuff is going to happen. Um, you know, all over the world. It's not why. Why France? Why even talk about the Mars Uranus square? Well, the Mars Uranus square is going to be telling us something about um, the environment, um, the ambient picture. So, when you've got a Mars Uranus square, it's going to be perhaps more likely that when a policeman encounters a 
teenager in a car who's who's um um who's breaking the law or whatever is more likely to respond to the situation perhaps by using his firearm um mars uranus is also you know the planet of you know is a combination connected with um you know driving fast in cars in a dangerous way so yeah it kind of sums up the situation but i wouldn't have said it's you know it's totally specific um to to nanterre though it's kind of worth noting that uh, the ruler of the midheaven is um the ruler of the midheaven here is mars and it's square uranus so that kind of fits we also might notice that pluto is pretty close to, pretty close to the descendant as as the car crash you know as the, as the car chase started pluto was on the seventh house cusp i mean i think the whole incident started um about uh, 25 minutes before at five to eight um five to eight in the morning so pluto would be would have been there on the seventh house cusp pluto is important maybe because pluto is on macron's ascendant right now you know well right now it is there it's a slow mover so macron in a way he's representative of the whole country you know, I've said this before with reference to Biden. Um, so let's look at um, Macron's chart. Um, here's his chart. So, yeah, when I was talking about Biden, I was saying that, you know, Biden is a head of state. And so however cognitively impaired he might be, he is the U.S. president and he is a representative of the United States. So in a sense, by having Biden as <laughs> having Biden biden as u.s president it's not just one man who's cognitively impaired it's a whole nation that's uh, cognitively impaired um it's a whole nation that's stumbling upstairs uh, it's a whole nation that's making these you know stumbles and mistakes and all of that kind of stuff so um yeah the president the head of state represents the the nation and Emmanuel Macron likewise represents the nation represents France um, I suppose what does it you know he it, I mean in France that's particularly the case isn't it why what does it go the sun king l'état c'est moi the state is me that's Emmanuel Macron and uh, that sort of medieval notion of kingship is very much there and he's often been described as being jupiterian he is jupiter personified um and there is his there is macron's ascendant at uh, 2849 um 2849 capricorn so pluto is on his ascendant and in a way pluto is on france's ascendant because macron is the state l'état c'est moi uh so that's uh that's that's something going on in his chart so when we talk about macron being jupiterian do we do we get any feel for that in his chart well he's got a load of man, he's got a load of planets in sagittarius um he's got mercury sun and venus in sagittarius um and, and of course jupiter rules sagittarius um i don't think he is an entirely typical Sagittarius um, I mean when you think about Sagittarians you often think about um, you know the the free-flowing nature of, ta of Sagittarians the fact that they speak their mind um, the sort of fun-loving aspect of being of being a Sagittarius um, but you know he is uh, he, he you know he he wants to be in control you know there was um there was a video of of macron at some official i don't know what it was some i mean some it was a serious event or whatever and um there was some student um who addressed him as i think um manu um i think that may be french a french as a familiar french um contraction of a manual so manu 
and uh, and um, Macron was not annoyed. But sorry, Ma- Macron was seriously annoyed. Sorry, and he he said call and he said to the student in a very serious way, call me call me Mr. President, call me Sir. Um, particularly in this situation, it's very serious. So this man, Macron, takes himself um, extremely seriously. Um, and you, that almost suggests that he had a certain moral outrage that this student dared call him Manu um, at, at a somber event. Um, and maybe we're seeing here um, Macron's Jupiter in, Jupiter in Cancer. Now, Yesterday, when I talked about the United States chart, um, I noted that the United States has Jupiter in Cancer, and I saw that as being about um, the United States' moral, you know, moralizing. Um, you know, yeah, the Americans do moralize. Um, uh, you know, when you try to get, you know, when you get an immigrant, when you apply to move to, to for an immigration visa, you know, they they ask whether you've committed crimes of moral turpitude, um, and if you've committed a crime of moral turpitude, then you're likely to have your application for a visa, not just an immigration visa, any visa, um, denied. So that's the morality of the of the United States you know there's this sort of morality around alcohol in in um in um in the United States it's somehow seen as being seedy in a way that it's not seen as seedy perhaps in in Europe but then anyway, anyway that's the morality of um of of the United States and the, and the morality of Macron um we also um we also notice that uh, he has got Mars in the seventh house, in the seventh house, and that is potentially um, that's potentially quite a dangerous um, place uh, for Mars. Um, I mean, obviously he's been president for over five years, and no one's assassinated him yet. But uh, I mean, I'm sure they won't. But Mars does suggest that you're dealing with someone who has got. Um, who has got powerful enemies, and there may be certain points in his political career um, where he does have to be have to be where he does have to be very careful. As far as you know, the rats are concerned. Um, you know, he is someone who is going to be attracting rats. Um, you know, I'm not an expert on France, but we've had the yellow vests. Um, I think they were protesting against. High, very high fuel price, you know, huge rats. Then he wanted to um, raise the pension age, more rats, and of course we've had the current thing. And you know, his second term as presidency has only just started. So you can see in his chart he's got Moon opposition Uranus, and so the Moon could we could see that as the ordinary people, uh, the people on the streets who perhaps in the old days used to throw cobblestones, and it's opposition Uranus. So he is someone who can attract riots um, through, through that moon opposition Uranus. And notice that um, notice that Mars is opposition Uranus. Uh, Mars is three degrees off the opposition of Uranus. And so it's interesting that at the at the um, at the killing of Nahel Merzouk, um, we also had Mars. Mars. We had Mars square Uranus. So maybe, um, maybe um, Macron with that Mars opposite with the. Um, hold on, let's have I got this right? Um, sorry, let me get that straight. Macron has Mars square Uranus, not opposition Uranus. In fact, you can see. Uh, let me go into more details. It's a T square because Macron has got Moon, Moon in Taurus, opposition Uranus in Scorpio, and he's got Mars on the T, and it's in fixed signs. This man, Macron, is really stubborn, and his stubbornness um, is going to inflame his country, and as it's already happening now, I know that these kind of riots are quite relatively 
relatively common. Uh, I think is it 2005, 2006? I can't remember which one, one of those years. Um, there were big riots, in, very quite similar riots in France again. So it's not, it's not kind of unique to unique to Macron. Um, but uh, again, his second term as president has only just has only just started, um, and he's going to be president, I believe, until 2027, unless something happens. And so this moon opposition, Uranus, with Mars on the T, his inflexibility could cause real, real trouble. Um, and we have to remember, you know, with that Jupiter in Cancer, all that Sagittarius, he believes he is right. You know, Sagittarians, Sagittarius is a planet, as a Sagittarians, Sagittarius is a sign, you know, it's a far sign. You know, when I was talking about Nigel Farage a few days ago, you know, that, that you know, the far signs have a great sense of, that they know what the truth is. Um, you know, it's not like Macron is kind of analysing, trying to work out what the truth is. No, he knows what the truth is, even if he's wrong. But he feels he knows what the truth is, and therefore he is not going to compromise it. And when you put in that moon opposition Uranus square Mars, that could create a lot of problems. Now, another thing about this chart, which... I do find interesting is that he's only got one planet in an air sign and that is Pluto and as I say Pluto's generational it's not we don't look at Pluto when we're doing the elemental balances he's got no air in his chart now the air in astrology is often associated with the intellect and whatever Emmanuel Macron is a first-class intellect he is really really bright he's probably the brightest European leader. <laughs> I mean, he's he's really clever. Um, so when you've got um, when you've got someone who is very bright who has no air in their chart, it's about intellectual inflexibility and perhaps arrogance. You know, he's done his studying, he's worked out his philosophy, and he doesn't have to think about it anymore. He's he's done it. He's been to university, read what he had to read, seen the world. Um, he can certainly argue his case extremely well. You wouldn't want to have an argument with Macron about his views because he'd almost certainly win. Um, but there's no flexibility there. And I think that's where we see um, the we, where we see the, you know, the lack of um, um, the lack of air. Um, so um, I also uh, want to look at his Vedic chart. So here is his Vedic chart. Um, Vedic chart is quite quite interesting, quite straightforward. Um, so looking at his Vedic chart um, and his uh, his dashas, you know, as I've as I've said, you know. In Indian astrology, life is divided into nine dis distinct periods. Add those periods all together and it comes to 120 years. And in 2009, um, Macron entered his Rahu Dasha. Um, to be precise, July the 29th, 2009, he entered his Rahu Dasha. And it lasts until July, uh, July 2027. Um, so if you look at his chart, his Rahu is in Virgo. And in Indian astrology, Rahu works very well in, um, in Virgo. Um, it also works well in Gemini. Um, you know, when we looked at um, Nigel Farage's chart, we saw that he is in a Rahu period, uh, which started, I think, in around 2012. And his Rahu, his Rahu is in Gemini. And so, you know, his, he, Farage has done very well. And so, um, you know, given, given, his, given his resources, he's, he's been largely responsible for taking Britain out of the European Union. And he, 
despite his wobble at the moment, I don't think he's going away anytime soon. Now, as far as um, as Macron is concerned, um, he, you know, it was un in this period, Rahu in Gemini, that he became, he, but he became, but he became French president. Um, so um, I think that that fits well. And, you know, when I saw him being elected, when I saw what he was elected, I looked at this, you know, when he got elected in 2017, and when I looked at this and I thought, well, his Rahu Dasha is going to continue um, for a long time. I was thinking he is going to get re-elected. I think it was quite obvious using Indian astrology that he was going to get re-elected. Um, so um, that's... Uh, um yeah that 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 to me was um was pretty clear and when does his rahu dasha end his rahu dasha ends um in uh, june july 2027 his ter his second term as president ends in um i believe in may 2027 so that kind of fits fits very nicely um but I wonder how this presidency is going to end. Um, his, as I, you know, I said, looking at his Western chart, he's got um, Mars in the seventh. Obviously, in his east, well, not obviously, but in his case, his he's got Mars also in the seventh in his Eastern chart. Not surprising, but you know, Mars in the seventh is the enemy. Is can be enemies, and he's got enemies, and so far these enemies haven't really expressed themselves but i think they will um the last sub period of his of his rahu dasha uh starts in july july the 11th 2026 um so the last 10 months of his term as president um could be very difficult um i think i think rahu i think i think macron overall um is probably more vulnerable to assassination than most politicians. I mean, again, I'm not saying he's going to be assassinated. I mean, Mars in the seventh. Okay, Bobby Kennedy had Mars in the seventh, but he had Mars in the seventh. It was he had it exactly on the seventh house cusp. Um, but I, I do think there is a vulnerability to Macron. And Macron, I think, you know, when he's handling his, you know, his security and all that kind of kind of thing, I think he has to be he has to be extra careful now i'm going to briefly talk about his his rival not i mean the person he beat at the last presidential election which is which was marine marine le pen i just very quickly want to look at marine le pen's chart um and so let's look i'm going to start by yeah i'm going to look at her um her western chart so here we go. Um, right, Marine Le Pen. Okay, this is Marine Le Pen's chart. She was uh, she was born on August fifth, nineteen sixty eight, at eleven twenty a.m. You know, one of the great things about French charts and also German charts is they always have you know always have the time of birth. Time of birth is 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 always there. And so Marine Le Pen, yeah, we know what you know what time she was born. Um, you know, in a strange way, in a kind of superficial way, um, Marine Le Pen's chart reminded me of Meghan Markle's chart. Um, reason being is the Sun and Mercury. Um, Marine Le Pen um, is a Leo, a like um, like uh, Meghan Markle, and. When I talked about Meghan Markle's chart, I noted that she had she had Mercury in Leo as well. So the Sun and Mercury is uh, um, the Sun was a was kind of eclipsing Meghan's Mercury and making it difficult for her to to really have any any kind of kind of objectivity. And Marine Le Pen also has this Sun conjunct Mercury. Um, and that's potentially, you know, presenting problems for her. But um, I, it seems, in terms of if you look at um, Marine Le Pen, she's probably got 
a little more flexibility from Marine Le- from Meghan Markle. I mean, in terms of what I know about her political career, and I don't really know much about her, but I think that she's very good. Marine Le Pen is very good at um, reinventing herself. Um, you know, she was her father. You know, her father. What was it? Jean Marie Le Pen. He he set up this far right party, Le Front National, and Marine Le Pen took over it, but she. Um, sort of rebranded it so it's now not called Le Front National um, National Front it's called the um, Rassemblement National which is a national rally Um, so she does have a certain amount of flexibility there it would appear but her chart actually doesn't indicate much flexibility Um, you know if those you know those you know that that Leo is she's very she is um, very sure of herself and it's a very strong sun. You know, she's born daytime chart, sun in Leo, um, uh, sun above the horizon. Yeah, she she is very sure of herself. Um, but, you know, maybe she's just better advised for Meghan Markle. Uh, Me- Me- Meghan Markle. Me- uh, but I suppose, you know, she's a politician. If you're a politician, um, you do have to be flexible. Um now, Marine Le Pen has Saturn in Aries in the seventh, and Saturn doesn't work very well in Aries. Saturn is um, Saturn is fallen in Aries, and so maybe she's got some powerful enemies, um, and Saturn is also um, ruler of the fourth house, which is the fourth house in Western astrology is usually treated as being a father, so that Saturn could represent. Um, Jean-Marie Le Pen um, who who started it all off um, and he really was very um, uh, very right wing I think he may have actually sort of kind of had a bit of a disagreement with his daughter about where she wanted to take things Um, but maybe that Saturn in Aries represents um, the legacy of her father which is sort of holding her up um, hold it perhaps holding up her her political career and her ambitions um, and we can this is perhaps supported by the fact that Mars she's got Mars in cancer again Mars is not great in um, in cancer it's um, it's fallen in cancer so she's got Mars fallen Saturn fallen um, and Mars and Saturn are in um, are in square with each other, and so um, I um, I think that's going to make it difficult for her. She I I mean it's going to be very difficult for her to escape the legacy of you know the legacy of um, of her father. Um, and there is another thing about this chart. It's actually got another got something in common with Macron's chart. There's no air. There's nothing in Gemini, nothing in Aquarius, nothing in Libra. So, um, uh, so I think that's, um, is it a problem? I don't know, there's still a lack of flexibility. I, you know, deep down, I think she has her ideas. She has her way of wanting to do things. Um, and um, maybe she doesn't compromise or, or, We've got a compensation here. Um, now, I, I'm sure that with Macron, we have no compensation. Um, with Marine Le Pen, maybe we do. Because if you've got some, you know, some people with no air, they kind of know they've got no air and they kind of know it's a problem. And then they really appreciate people who have a lot of air, who are intellectual, who are ideas people. Um, yeah, so Macron's not going to appreciate that because he's got all. He knows everything, but maybe with Marine Le Pen, we've got some compensation here going on. I mean, I said I don't know how she runs, how she um, runs things, but maybe there are people that she listens to, who are kind of air people who, and they they kind of compensate for this. So that is a possibility. So we don't know for sure. At least how? At least I don't know because I said I, I'm not. I'm not very familiar with what's going on in French politics, which is a good reason for bringing this video 
to a close. Anyway, that's it for today and I will talk to you tomorrow.